Timing, okay, we make all kinds of when decisions in our life. When in the day should we do certain kinds of work? When in the day should we exercise? When should we take a break? When in our life should we quit a job, start a new career, get married? We tend to make those decisions in a very haphazard way uh, through intuition and guesswork because we believe that timing is an art. Well, after two years of research, I've discovered that's not quite right, that timing is really a science, that there is this amazing, rich body of research out there that can give us systematic, evidence-based clues to make shrewder, smarter decisions about when to do stuff. So we believe that timing is an art, but timing is really a science. And we can use that science to make better decisions. So among the questions that I try to answer, why should you never go into the hospital or schedule an important doctor's appointment in the afternoon? Why does beginning your career in a recession to press your wages 20 years later? Why are you most likely to run your first marathon at age 29, this is true, at age 29, 39, 49, or 59? Why is singing in a choir as good for your physical and mental health as exercise? What are the, some of the powers when we synchronize in time with other people? And finally, this actually pretty urgent question for some of us, uh, when during the year is your spouse most likely to file for divorce? Turns out there are two monthly peaks in divorce filings. But what I want to talk about today is just one aspect of this body of research, and it's this question right here. What is the hidden pattern of the day? How does it affect our mood, and how does it affect our performance? Turns out that there's some interesting research on this that yields very specific, very practical things we can do to live a little bit better and work a little bit smarter. One of the interesting things that's happening in the world of research right now is how much scholars are relying on ginormous data sets to find insights. Now, a lot of experimental social psychology, for instance, the, the paper will say, we took 71 undergraduates. We put 35 in this condition, 36 in this condition, and run an experiment, and you yield some insights. And that's legit. But there are other um, methodologies now that, that don't get us causation, but get us some fascinating correlations. And so this is one of them from Cornell. Um, there's a program out there called the LIWC, the Linguistic Inventory Word Count. It's a piece of software that can evaluate text. And one of the things that it can do is, at a very rudimentary level, it can measure the emotional content of words. And so these researchers took 500 million tweets, none of them from my president, <laughs> two and a half million users in 84 countries. Okay, this is the big and big data. And what they did is they threw these, remember, tweets are text, written words. So they take these massive amount of written words, throw them into this program, and the program then measures the emotional content of the words, and then they measure it across the time of the tweet. So the idea would be that we can measure people's emotions as they leak sort of through people's tweets. They plotted it over time. Here's what it looks like. What you had is a peak, a trough, and a recovery. A peak up there in the morning, a trough. I appreciate RSA giving me the coveted 1 p.m. time <laughs> slot. Um, and then a recovery. A peak, a trough, a recovery. That's kind of interesting. The other scholars in other domains have looked at this question as well. Let me give you one example of this. So there's a, a, you know, one, of the, one of the preeminent social scientists of our time, Daniel Kahneman, was part of a team of researchers who, who came up with a different methodology, something called the day reconstruction method. And for that, what he and, and his colleagues did was have people um, write down, essentially, each hour what they're doing and how they're feeling about it. Drinking my cup of coffee, I feel good, all right? So reconstruct their day, what they're doing and their mood. And then, so he took a large sample of these people who were reporting their, essentially their hour to hour mood based and their activity. And he, he and his team too plotted it over time of day. And here's what they found. A peak, a trough, a recovery. Now, it's not the exact same pattern as this, but it's the same general shape. And no matter the domain, when you look at people's mood over the course of a day, it follows that kind of pattern. No matter the discipline, no matter methodology, you see this common hidden pattern of the day. Okay, so that's our mood. What about performance? Let's go back to that program, the Linguistic Inventory Word Count, which analyzes text. And let's look at the corporate world. What these researchers at New York University did is they took the transcripts of earnings calls of American public companies. Public companies have, every quarter, have 
earnings calls, where the executives get on the call and they say, here's what our earnings were this quarter, here's what we expect them to be this quarter, et cetera, et cetera. These are things that corporate executives prepare mightily for. They're a big deal. Stock price moves up and down in response to these calls. So they took, again, I want to emphasize the big in big data. These researchers took 26,000 calls, 2,100 companies, six and a half years. They said, let's measure the emotional content of these calls, and let's plot it against time of day. And they said, surely it couldn't matter what the time of day is to these hard-headed, economically rational executives with a lot of money on the line. Certainly they would be immune from any of these diurnal effects. And the answer to that is, of course not. Because, I mean, why would I be mentioning it if it, <laughs> right? So, but let's take a look at this, because this, this is actually quite, I think it's quite fascinating. Afternoon calls were more negative, irritable, and combative, leading to temporary stock mispricings for the firms hosting calls later in the day. This is true even if you control for fundamentals, right? So if you're reporting earnings that are terrible, you're going to be irritable. If you had a bunch of factories that burned down, you're going to be irritable. But even if you control for the fundamentals of what they're, perform they're, they're reporting, negative afternoon calls were more negative and irritable, and it had a temporary effect on the stock. And so these researchers, who most scholars don't like to offer prescriptive advice, they offer prescriptive advice here. An important takeaway from our study for corporate executives is that communications with investors and probably other critical managerial decisions and negotiations should be conducted earlier in the day. Thank you.